Hey guys, Fragman Soul here, and in this video, we're going to be unboxing and looking at the Blue Yeti X. Gotta say, it's a bit of a beauty when it comes to microphones. Anyway, before we get stuck into the unboxing, I wanna say I'm gonna be giving away this microphone at the end of the video, so stay tuned to find out how you can have a chance to win this absolute beauty. Anyway, enjoy the video and make sure you subscribe for more tech content. And if you enjoy the video, like it. If you don't, dislike it. Either way, it all helps out and lets me know whether I'm doing things right or wrong. Anyway, let's get into the video. Right, let's go straight in with the unboxing. Here we go. We're just going to cut this little seam here. I'm going to try and be as gentle as possible with this as we are obviously giving this one away. So I don't want to break it too much. If I can help it, let's just stick that up there. Okay, there we go. got that new new tech smell it's kind of like <laughs> i don't know if it's like plastic or what but you know what i mean when you get a new phone or whatever it's got that lovely smell to it here we've got some basic instructions about how to use your microphone um the patterns metering new button gain headphone level and blend still good it's got the inputs at the bottom 3.5 mil jack and uh, the micro usb and usb as well I know, sorry, it's just micro USB to USB, my bad. Okay. So we've got very nicely padded, look at that. Ooh, juicy. Oh, this is nice. I'm a bit jealous actually that I'm giving this away because So the, the microphone I'm using at the moment is a XLR microphone. It's a really nice microphone, but there's something quite lovely about getting some new new gear, right? It just looks smart. Look at that. Beauty. That is a lovely looking microphone. Just trying to get it in the camera frame for you guys. Let's see if I can just focus in on that. It's got kind of a, a, uh, a, let's say a cone, but you know, it's got a pointy head on that way. And that side is uh, nice and straight or flat. Having to manual folks, they apologize for that. It's just better for when I'm doing this sort of thing. So the camera doesn't focus all the time. But yeah, that is, that is, it's got this lovely matte finish to it. And obviously you can disconnect it from the mount. You've got some rubberized washers in here to stop it from vibrating, which is huge, kind of very important to have. A little bit, the first thing I do is take it apart. Okay. And then you've got here, yeah, that's a nice little feature. So when you when you connect it to a mount, obviously you connect it to this centre bit there. It's got a rubber pad in it to help absorb shock absorb. So there's your three point five mil um, jack. There's your micro USB, which will go into obviously into the USB into your PC. That'll be your volume button which will have LEDs on it and mute as well. And then you've got your pattern there to switch it, depending on whether you're just gonna have the audio coming from this direction, this direction, obviously all round and um, uh, just front as well. Okay, nice. So let's stick that back in. I'm probably just going to do the demonstration of this using the mount we've got here. 
and I'm going to need to get those uh, little rubber. And the rubber. Oh, that is nice. Okay, so one thing I noticed on my Yeti Pro mount that I got for my, I've got the Yeti, the black Yeti Pro, and my wife's got the other, just the Yeti. And the, on the on the mounts here, on the older versions, basically the washers here, A, they're not rubber. I don't know if you can see that. Let me just focus a little bit more. So that has got given it, all right, obviously to to keep the um, shocks, any shocks from the desk, so they're not transferred to the microphone, which is humongous. Um, but they're fixed in. They're fixed in the mount, so you don't lose them. I have lost one side of the washers on my wife, so I'm having to, I've had to replace them. Just look at that stand there, do I look at this? I'm sorry I'm getting fingerprints all over this. I will clean this up, obviously, for when we give it away. But that is a lovely sort of like uh, a dark chrome base to it as well. This is a very sexy microphone, this. Really, really, really nice. Again, let's stick that back in now. <laughs> I don't want to give it away. Okay, let's do some testing. Currently, I'm using the XLR microphone. Here is, here is the Yeti X, and we're going to plug this in. Just going to use the micro USB and there you go, you can see it powering up at the moment and we've got the volume control to put it up and down. Very cool little feature this, you can switch. So if you look underneath, you can see I put the um, micro USB in there, there's the uh, 3.5 mil audio jack and in there you can either monitor, use it as a sound card to have your headset and plug into that for your computer. You can also monitor the microphone audio as well by um, by changing some settings. So if you look at the front here, you can press and hold this button and it switches it. So that now is on the headphone. This is headphone volume. So this is the 3.5 mil audio underneath. That's the headphone volume coming out of there. And then if you press it again, this is the cool bit, it switches it. You can see both lights are on at the bottom there. Let's see if I can just uh, focus this a little bit. It might be difficult to see this. But um, basically that one where my finger is, is a little picture of a microphone. I just I can just focus on here. You can just about see it there. Can you see that's the microphone? Okay, we'll do this nice and close. So that's the microphone there. And you can see the pink is all the way around to that side. So if I bring this up, I'm now splitting the, uh, what's coming out the 3.5 mil jack is gonna be split between headphone uh, on this side and microphone. So it's gonna be balanced um, with the sound card. So what basically the headphone is uh, desktop audio and that one is the microphone audio. That's the, um, that's the monitoring. So if I bring this across to that side, that means the split is now onto the headphone side and there'll be lost monitoring. So I can't hear myself with the microphone. You can bring that all the way down that side. So the split is all the way down. That means I won't hear any of the microphone at all. Or if I want to have it monitoring, I can spin that all the way around. And now it's monitoring the, um, the microphone and not acting as a sound card at all. So you have to press and hold that. That's obviously the microphone and I'm going to talk, that's going up, that's the microphone going up and down, press it and hold it. That's the volume of the headset, that's the volume of the headphones with it being mixed and then press and hold it again and there we go, that is the split between headphones. Currently on mic, if I just bring this, this back to front to the middle, that will now be split between the microphone and also the headphone. Very cool little feature that to have and what that means is if you have a dual setup, a dual um, PC and a, uh, let's say, a game PC, for example, you can plug this into your, I guess, um, stream PC, have the audio from that going to the stream PC, but put in the 3.5 mil jack 
um, the headphone and the microphone monitor or the mon micro monitor and then feed that microphone input into your microphone or your motherboard uh, of your, your game PC and then you'll have the audio coming out from the microphone onto the game PC as well as recording obviously the USB microphone. So you can use one microphone for two, two, um, two computers, which is great because it means you don't need to have a, a USB audio interface to split the audio or you don't have to have two microphones, one microphone for your game PC and one microphone for your stream PC. So it's a lovely little work around that and it's a superb feature to have. Just at a click of a button, you basically got a sound card built in and monitoring headphones and splitting it up. It's uh, you got options there and it's great to have options because it's always custom to your setup. Now currently, obviously I'm not talking on that microphone because I've been handling it. It is about, I'm guessing about 35 centimeters. I put my camera angle down so you can see where the microphone is and we're gonna switch between microphones. Now this isn't in the rawest form, this is all the way up the volume is ramped all the way up on that microphone and I'm going to switch microphones now. You'll, what you notice is that I'm probably sounding fairly, it's, it's, you know, I've got this microphone is very close to my mouth and it's sounding pretty decent. I'm going to switch the Blue Yeti X. Now that probably sounds a little less, less deep. Um, this is in its rawest form we are going at the moment. Because it's about 35 centimeters, the sensitivity of the Yeti X at the moment is up quite high. So it's gonna pick a lot of background noise up and it won't sound, um, it won't be resonating nicely in on the audio. But if I get closer like this and not shout so much, it's probably gonna be sounding a hell of a lot better. Um, one thing I did not show you, which I showed you obviously on the, um, we've got the, uh, the cardioid uh, settings at the moment on the back, the pattern at the back, and you can just switch this round by pressing that button so it just there so it's gonna be front of facing so it's gonna pick up audio from sorry to do the manual focus but autofocus is not good for webcams that is definitely not a good thing to have um anyway so yeah there we have it cardoid set up and we're about as say 35 centimeters away so it's not not an ideal positioning here i do have a spare basic mount here and we could mount it onto that but i just want to show you the difference with it being sat on the desk which is quite handy i mean it's still the range of audio is still fairly good it's picking up my audio the levels are going up now i want to switch over to um my discord scene so you can see what my desktop is and i'm going to take things further from there okay so you can see how my obs is set up i've got rid of the preview otherwise it does that so we're going to get rid of that mirroring and we're going to see here, this is the Yeti X. I'm just going to pump on the uh, my other microphone at the moment. moment and you'll, you'll see, see where the level, level is on that. that. Let's just pull that up very, very quickly so we can see what we're doing here. here. So, so the audio level's a little bit higher on my XLR, XLR which is the bottom one, than the Yeti X. But we can change that. That's fine. You can add a bit of gain. I'm just going to pull that off. So what I can do is go into here and collect a filter, put a gain on that and bring it up probably a little bit loud now bring that back a bit but you want to be hitting in the uh, in the yellows for when you're talking quiet well not quietly but when you're talking normally and because i'm because it's not facing me as well and bear in mind this is a card because it's not facing me when i'm looking at the camera and looking at the obs it's obviously my voice is traveling this direction and i want to be traveling this direction obviously straight towards the microphone so um if it was going to stay in that position and i would talk normally when i'm streaming i'd look this way but if I was to um, like be looking at the microphone, I'll bring it underneath the microphone so it's talking directly um, at you and at it, so to speak. But um, because obviously this is gonna be the situation that we're gonna have, I'm just using this for a demonstration, but this is what it sounds like when it's on your desk. Now there is a bit of software that comes with this that allows you to change a few settings with the Yeti X, and I'm just gonna open that up right now. This is the uh, the Logitech G Hub. Uh, please excuse the um, the mess on my desktop. I feel like I've been coming to my dirty room. Um, <laughs> but here it is, the Yeti X. This is the software that we're looking at here. Um, and if we click on that, we've got some features. So at the moment, if you look on the left hand side of the of the screen, you can see all I've got set is the Yeti X. In fact, I will move this across while I'm talking about this so I can see what I'm doing. Um, 
We've got the, the Yeti X mic gain, which we can increase, and I can wrap that up to 100. That should put me well into the red, which means I can whip off that filter now for the gain. There we go, that should be a little bit better, and pull that up. So I should be hitting the yellow mark with that Yeti X gain on there with the software. And um, just go down the features very quickly. We've got a microphone, we've got lighting, which is a nice little feature for those that love the RGB. You can change the um, the colors of your knobs uh, depending on how it fits your scene and your color style, or if you struggle to see it, uh, you can play around with those, um, which is rather nice. And then you got the 3.5 mil output at the bottom. So you got your Yeti X headphone output, you can change the bass and treble on there and then you've got the direct monitoring one as well um, which you can put up and you got you got some advanced EQ for that um, which is which is nice but we don't want to play around that settings too much that's very kind of like not necessarily what you're gonna hear it's what I hear in the headset if I plug in a 3.5 mil the important one is the microphone settings on here now as you can tell um, as I say we're quite far away from the microphone ideally want to be this close but we're not gonna do that just yet what I will do though is just enable the blue voice. Now this is like got a bit of an EQ for the microphone and this should change the way that I sound. What I'm gonna do is just pull this down slightly so you can see all the options. I'm just worried about this audio here. Now I will be dipping in and out. The reason why I'm dipping in and out is because we've got certain of these uh, noise reductions and expanders. I'm gonna whip these off right now and we're gonna go through these because, <clears throat> okay, we'll go for those device features in just a second. They're really, really good, but you've got to be careful that you don't leave those on because if you start changing the um, the volume of your voice or you move away from the microphone a little bit, like I was doing then, the volume will cut out, which is not good. And I just realized that my uh, Yeti X my gain was down because I ripped it down to the um, enable blue voice, which I obviously want up at the moment. Uh, right, so with this, you get some nice um, blue voice presets, which is very, very cool. So these change the EQ levels, all right, and they make things sound a little bit different. I can't hear what's going on at the moment, and the way I recommend you guys test this is to listen to it yourself. In OBS, you want to go to Edit, Advanced Audio Properties, find your Blue Yeti X, and click on the uh, the audio monitoring and put on to um, monitor and output. Obviously, I am monitoring this as well as recording as an output. So I'm doing both. Um, we'll just pull that off that. And then you can change around with some of these settings. So straight away, you notice that I've pulled the lows all the way down, so they're quiet, so you can't hear them. Put them in the middle and they should sound a bit deeper. And then we wrap that up to plus 15 and it sounds a little bit more rounded and softer. Um, on the the lower ends, which is which is quite nice, so you can play play around. Oh, that sounds a bit wonky, but you can play around with all these to get it right for your setup. Now, remember, I've said that I'm about thirty centimeters away from the microphone, which, to be honest, isn't an ideal standing point. You want to be about fifteen centimeters is a good um, distance from your mouth. You're not chewing on your microphone but you are also um, close enough to start picking. Can you hear how, can you hear how that's, I hate monitoring on, but can you hear how much clearer that sounds just by getting closer? And the closer I get, obviously the quieter I can drop the mic levels, but um, it just becomes like instantly that sounds so much better. Than being back here because the microphone's got to work a lot harder picking all these different sounds coming up. I've got computers coming in, fans, and all this sort of stuff that it's picking up on. Anyway, the blue voice pre. So let's check out some of these um, extra advanced controls. If you haven't got these up, just click on this little tab here. It should bring them up. There you go. 
Uh, the high pass is an interesting one. The high pass uh, filter lets the high frequency information pass through the filter as a target frequency and roll off all audio below the target frequency. This can be helpful to remove low engine noises like cars and engines or heavy machinery equipment in the room. Okay, so at the moment it's set to 70 hertz and this is fine, but if you then further increase this, what you'll see or listen, you can see, you can hear, the fact that my voice, uh, the, the bass levels of the voice is starting to get removed from this because we're going so high up with the high pass. So just be careful. Um, or just listen to the audio settings when you're doing this to make sure that the um, your voice isn't becoming um, too I don't know less than what you want it to be um, and go back and do that so I think it was in 70 noise reduction noise reduction removes unwanted noise from an audio signal at um, it is best at removing consistently produced noises like fans road noises rain and other non-anomalous and consistent unwanted sounds so this is, I say, well, pretty much what it is. Um, it's not necessarily a noise gate, this. This kind of removes those frequencies. So set anything at the frequency you want uh, and it will help remove those. You have got these three little buttons here that will further allow you to tweak the settings of the noise reduction. This applies to some of the other settings as well. Uh, we've got the release on the milliseconds. You've got sensitivity, bias, and the maximum attenuation as well to play around with. I'm not going to play around with those yet because A, I can't hear myself do that. And uh, this is obviously with the microphone desk mounted as opposed to arm mounted. Um, so that's the noise reduction. Expand a gate. This is going to be quite handy if you have quiet spells of um, talking and you have background noise that you want to remove. So expand it is a noise gate with a variable range. This can be very useful to remove unwanted background noise like dogs barking, children playing, television, etc. when not speaking into the mic. If you set the threshold slightly below the level of your voice, the gate will openly, um, open only when speaking and cut out any other noise when not. So I tend to have a noise gate on OBS uh, when my microphone was um, playing up a little bit because when I was um, not talking, the, noise, the microphone would actually hum and you can just set the noise gate to whatever that setting is and just get rid of it completely. So that is that is quite handy. Like the uh, microphones, did the, uh, the, the tooltip did say, set it below your voice level, otherwise you won't speak. Now, the big problem I found out with the one in um, OBS on this um, and Discord sometimes is that if your volume is, if your voice volume is in and out, it's, it, it fluctuates a lot. Sometimes it takes a while for the mic to pick in. Actually, I found that the Blue Yeti is quite quick at responding to your voice and picks it up and doesn't like cut off the start of your sentences. So um, it's a bit better than the ones that were in the, um, in, in the say, in the OBS software. But still, um, you want a little play out for that. Just make sure you're not being cut off too much because there's nothing worse than not getting the first couple of words of a sentence. Um, but I'm going to switch it off because my noise gate isn't too bad. And um, the DS, -er, oh, there is, sorry, I've got to say, there are three extra little buttons for that. I like to change this. We got attack, threshold, release, hysteresis. I don't even know what that is. Um, range ratio and a gain reduction. I'm going to have to do some Google research on what those are. Um, these are kind of advanced controls that, you know, you know I'm not a full on expert at this. Uh, <laughs> I try my best, but I'm not like a sound engineer. I'm a video gamer. Um, Diesa. So Diesa listens to the high frequencies of hissing or sibilant um, sounds that are generally unpleasant. The tool listens at the target frequency, 8 kilohertz by default, and compresses that frequency when the threshold is reached by the amount set by the ratio control. So this is great for just kind of killing those high sounds. Again, with this one, you got the three little buttons at the top here uh, and you can play around with the frequency. And, um, you know, if you got that high pitch noise coming from somewhere, um, to be honest, normally these like high pitch noises, I want the noises come from the 3.5 mil um, microphone jack, plug it into your motherboard. And the motherboard gives us this like terrible hum when it's kind of, collecting audio from it. So um, you won't have that problem because it's, it's all digital used in the USB um, control on the underside of the microphone on this. So that shouldn't be an issue. But if you do have those high pitch frequencies, that's great for getting rid of it. Then you've got the compressor and the compressor reduces the dynamic range of an audio signal by attenuating the output in relation to the threshold and ratio controls. This essentially makes your voice signal more consistent in volume and therefore easier to hear whether you are screaming or whispering. This, I think, is a pretty huge um, thing to have for, well, for anything, whether it's podcast or 
gaming or streaming, um, you know, or recording videos, because there are moments when you are recording that you won't be shouting or talking at your usual level and voice and that you want to come down and to be cut off and not heard is a pain. So having a compressor is a huge thing to have um, and great little feature. Again, three buttons here to kind of um, bring this in. You have the attack, threshold, release, and a ratio, as well as the game reductions. Play around with those in your unique and individual setup. And then finally, there's the limiter. The limiter is a tool that attenuates the signal at a target threshold and can bring the overall level up to a consistent volume using a game boost. This should ensure that the signal will not be louder than the target value, but it will still be constantly loud. Now, when you're setting your audio levels, um, which I do, obviously, I mean, OBS is going to got the uh, Blue Yeti X on at the moment. But if you're streaming, you have background music or if you're a podcast, you've got background music, you've got other people with other mics on, um, etc. Or you're playing in a band and you've got different levels going on. You want to have this level up more than others or less. You can play around with the limiter and that will reduce um, the noise coming through this microphone. So let's say you have an instrument coming from this one and then you have, um, you know, another mic uh, microphone for your voice and you want to make sure that the volumes are right. This would be something that you could possibly do using the limiter. Again, three little bars here for boost, attack, release and output. Once again, it's all personal preference to your setup. So they're the uh, advanced controls and that is using it um, unmounted. I've gone for the unmounted option here because I think a lot of people um, have a microphone further away from what I see um, when they are streaming. But if you are obviously on a podcast, you'll want to be closer. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to switch over microphones very quickly. What I'm going to do is just um, undo this one and mount it on the underside, on, on this, uh, this very cheap desk um, mount or this, you know, monkey mount here. Um, I think I mentioned this in the unboxing, but there is a rubber seal in the underside of that which um is huge because when you plug it when you when you screw them in in these threads it acts as a little bit of a like a cage where it kind of stops the vibrations coming through um which is uh yeah it's a nice little feature they've really gone to town on all these extra little features making um you know this microphone be very like it's it, you know for what the value for what it is it's not gonna be like a a super high-end mic but it does produce a very very good audio and um they have done a very good job in kind of like providing features or, or thinking about these features um for people anyway so i'll be probably a bit loud now because it's so close to my um my mouth and i can bring that down a little bit just to bring it i'm going to just try and match the volumes a little bit so that they're about the same that's probably about right and i will just dip this one off so it's not going over it and we can have a little look and change around the um, the presets for you. I've, I've done presets. Um, here we go. Let's just do. I've done presets here, but, but a broadcaster one we're currently on at the moment. We've got a broadcaster two. Um, classic radio voice, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the stream. Blah blah blah. <laughs> FM, FM, uh, high voice soft. Oh, I've done high, high voice loud. I mean. Play around with these settings as much as you like and get the right one. You've got to make sure that your vo your audio and your voice is suitable for all people, not just people with like a nice quality headset where they can get all the ranges. Because if you don't do that, and I did this in a previous video on my main YouTube account, um, people said that my voice sounded quite bassy, a little bit too bassy, and maybe it was a bit too bassy, but... The reason being is that I have asked what speaker they're listening to and they didn't have it on a headset. They listened to it from a phone phone or from, um, you know, a, a speaker that didn't have very good bass. So it kind of cut everything out and made the sound just sound terrible. So at the beginning of the video, I said I'm giving this away and I will be giving this away. It's very easy to do. The three main things that any YouTuber likes and that is to subscribe to the channel, like the video and comment in the comment section down below. But not just any comment. I want to tell me why you should win this microphone. Tell me what you're going to do with it. How you are going to spend all your time gazing into its beautiful matte finish and speaking your eloquently put together words, not like me. <laughs> uh, what are you going to do with it, guys? I need to know. I want to go to a lovely home and a well-deserved home. So tell me about you and what you're going to do with this microphone. Anyway, that is it for this video. I hope it's been useful. A nice little unboxing and the first unboxing for this channel. And hopefully there'll be more to come. And good luck with the giveaway. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Have a beautiful day. Take it easy.
fragment out.